What's up guys? Welcome to a YouTube video, but we're doing something new. So obviously you've noticed I probably haven't made a YouTube video in months now, which I apologize, but we've had a few things going on, which we're going to talk about. Uh, so we had the idea the other day to start a podcast. So Kai has been working here for like many years. How many years? Four or five now. Four or five years? Yeah. Uh, pretty much does everything in here with me, uh, throwing pots, glazing pots, you know, a lot of stuff is really inspired um, by him as well as me. And so we thought we'd start a podcast called Clay Coffee and Commerce. Clay, obviously, we do a lot of pottery. Coffee, because I own four coffee shops, which we'll talk about. Um, and commerce, because business ownership, entrepreneurship is something I feel really strongly about. Um, so every podcast episode... We're going to have a different kind of coffee. We're going to be drinking out of different kind of mugs that we make or other people make. Um, this coffee is our house blend at Mocha Monkey that we started roasting. It's Brazilian, Colombian, and Honduras. Uh, and every once in a while, my kids will probably make an appearance, which one of my kids just walked in the door. So this is going to be really casual. The point is um, we don't have to do a ton of editing. Hey, Ollie, come here. Hey, so we don't want to edit very much. Um, we just want to have casual conversations. We're going to be working on different stuff. Uh, this is one of my four boys. Um, and yeah, that's about it. How's the coffee taste? Pretty hot right now, but once I get to it. Yeah. So we just started roasting coffee at Mocha Monkey, which is one of the reasons I've been really involved in Mocha Monkey the last few months. A lot more than, you know, right when I started the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I'm not like a big black coffee guy, but this is actually pretty smooth. Yeah, like we're very smooth. It. Yeah. So this is a medium roast. Really good. It's the house blend. Um, so we got lots going on. So let's talk about what, what we're doing. You, what are you doing? Right now I'm just packing up orders from Etsy restock that we had last Hi, night. Um, yeah, just packing them up, sending them out to all the people that ordered them. So we do a restock once a month. We had like 100 some pots go up on Etsy last night. So he's shipping out some pots from that. Um, I am weighing out clay balls for a big order. So we have one big custom order for this holiday season from Southwest Transit. They're a pretty big company in the metro that I think is giving it out to all their employees. So I'm weighing out <clears throat> right around one pound balls. So there we go. All right. Get into like some backstory stuff. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about our backstory. Or our vision for this. Yes. Either or. Let's do it. Why don't you talk about your backstory first? How'd you start working in here? What's your business look like these days? So I started in here 20, summer 2020, yeah. right? Right before COVID? Yeah, so I was my freshman year of college. Started as an intern in here and then did that every summer up until last last year after I graduated then started full time so now it's just been in here for four or five years and been working in here and now I just do my own stuff on the side selling making stuff selling stuff and mostly like art fairs art markets stuff like that um, online stuff every once in a while try to post every once in a while and kind of about it nice yeah yeah so Kai started working. I've always kind of had somebody helping me in the studio. Mostly it was summers for a while. Um, and then, yeah, kind of when the YouTube channel started and I started thinking like, oh, I could make and sell a lot more pots. Um, I was looking for somebody more full time. Kai got his degree in ceramics. So was a clear, obvious person and we got along really well. He's a super hard worker, really good at all things clay, thinks differently. You know, Kai really likes atmospheric firings, um, whereas I've done a lot of electric firing over the years. But uh, the atmospheric fun of stuff has been super fun. We built the soda kiln this year, got the gas kiln right when Kai started. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. We make about five, probably 5,000 pots so far every year. And up until this point, we've sold most of them. Well, there goes the coffee. So we'll see how this goes. 
Um, the vision for the podcast, obviously, the name is Clay, Coffee, and Commerce. Mm. So any of those three topics we could kind of explore. You yeah. know, for me, they all are, they collide a lot mm. where, you know, this morning I was at Mocha Monkey, the coffee shops, where we have four stores. We just opened the fourth store, which we can talk about how much Kai was involved in that as well. Um, but basically, we just started roasting our own beans. We're working on a new website so we can sell the beans. And that's kind of the point of like, you know, if we talk about the house blend and I should even like get the notes of what's in the house blend. Yeah. But, um, cause like I'm not a big coffee person or haven't been until I started working in here and then just learning a lot from you, which I'm learning a lot too. I mean, I've owned a coffee shop for like 13 yeah. years and just now I'm like getting into like exactly how many beans and the ratio of the water beans. And you know, the roasting has been a huge it's so funny how similar roasting and kilns are. You know, you've heard me talk about that a bunch, but yeah. started roasting all about gas and airflow and time and temperature and following a profile curve, just like, I mean, a kiln log and a roasting profile are like identical. Yeah. Just one's going to 2,200 degrees and one's going to 400 degrees. Right. Yeah. So we thought those three areas worked really well together to talk about all three different and how they sometimes intermingle, sometimes don't, and learning from either us or other people in those worlds, so. Yeah, I also feel like it's just the resources. Um, there's a lot of people that make really cool stuff and make great art out there, but like figuring out how um, to sell it, like that I feel like is even harder, or it's just the harder aspect of it, you know? Like, you know, I have, a ton of followers online on different platforms and still it's like not the easiest thing in the world to sell pots. It's like still takes constant work and effort. And you know, for me, I'm very lucky and fortunate that I have four coffee shops and the coffee shops and the pottery go really well together. So like people come in for coffee, they see the pots or whatever. Right. Um, so anyway. Uh, well, we could start with your story too. Oh yeah, so my story Starts way back in college when I was a business management major. Um, took a trip to India and studied abroad there and came back with like this whole new perspective on life. And I enrolled in a pottery class. So as a business management major, I had no uh, business being in a pottery class, but I decided I want to take it and loved it right from the get go. Basically was like, I wanted to be doing this, um, but not wasn't ready to like go all in on just the pottery because it is, it's really hard to make it just as a potter, like alone. People do it, but it's hard. So then I walked into this coffee shop, Mocha Monkey, and a couple, Pam and Mark, had started it and he was a potter, Mark was a potter, and she was kind of the vision behind Mocha Monkey. And I just really liked the business a lot. And so I said, hey, you know, can I have a job? So I just got a job as a barista. And then through talking to them and through a lot of things, they were looking to sell and I was kind of fresh, ready to do something. Uh, so I took over that coffee shop, just that single location, put a pottery studio in the basement. So I'd throw pots and, you know, and that's where the, my first studio was. That was part of this YouTube channel. And then a couple years later, we got an opportunity to open a second location. And then we opened a third location a couple years later. And then we, then like in between there is when I started the YouTube channel, right? So I kind of was like, I want to be done growing the coffee shop for a little bit. Focus on the pottery. So focus on the pottery, started the YouTube channel. That started growing really quickly, which was really fun. Then we built the studio, hired Kai, and then we just got an opportunity to open a fourth store, which has been taking up most of my time. Uh, the past six months or so, I've just been more involved in the Mocha Monkey and the opening of a new store which was really fun. Um, and then we also just had a fourth boy too. So we have four boys. Uh, so I have a seven-year-old, five-year-old, three-year-old who was just in here and then uh, a brand new baby as well. So pretty similar stories, which kind of stumble upon <laughs> clay and then, yeah. but we're both like pretty business minded. That's kind of what. Yes. Yes. Like, both. Yeah. Kind of talk a lot in here um, about just anything, life and business and yeah. creativity, obviously pottery, but Kai's kind of seen me go from really focused on the pottery business mm -hmm. to a little more focused on the coffee business. Mm -hmm. And even like, I just see so many 
like collaborations, right? I mean, we sell a lot of pots at the coffee shop. So just keeping those stocked is, you know, a decent job. And then selling online has fluctuated a lot, right? Like right after COVID sold a ton of pots online. Like we, we would do a restock and it would be in a full day of packing and it's just not really that way anymore. Um, which I don't know. I think that's kind of similar in a lot of different, I know like Jericho pottery sold a ton at a certain mm -hmm. point and now it doesn't any, as sell yeah. as much anymore. And like, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's gone? You probably weren't quite ready to sell online at the time. It was right. really going crazy. Right. Yeah. And all the online, well, just even being in here during that time, it was crazy. Like everyone seemed like the reason for it, everyone was kind of stuck at home because we were locked down. Like that was when I started and, um, people that weren't going out and doing other things, so they had all their money and spent it on online is yeah. what I was assuming. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now it's life's back to normal. So now it's just maybe not as much online shopping. Right. Right. Does seem like in store and like art fairs and stuff have really. Yeah. People want to go out now. Yeah. Like yeah. they kind of saw like, Oh, we got forced to stay inside. So now it's, go out and see everything, see it in person. Seeing the pots in person is way better too for yeah. probably us. Which that's always been something that I've really felt strongly about in business was like having multiple revenue streams. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people will say like, go all in on one thing and you can <clears throat> kind of do that. But I mean, COVID, if I would have gone all, all in on the online sales and been like, that's all we do is online and been like, oh, Mocha Monkey, you can just whatever. Mm -hmm. Then now it's kind of flipped back where you know, we sell just as many pots in store in person mm -hmm. as we do online and having that, you just never really know. It's tempting when stuff comes up like, right. Oh, everything's going crazy online. Let's just do that only. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that. What else you guys feel free to comment on here. Give us ideas of what you, topics you want to hear. Um, I think moving forward, like we have a guy that we hired to roast, uh, we'll call him John the roaster. <laughs> His name is John and he is a roaster. So that is a fitting title. Uh, but we'd love to have, I told him this morning, like, hey, we should have you on this podcast, we'll talk about the coffees. Yeah. We could even do it at Milk Monkey. But there's just so many different, you know, Hammerly is someone that we were both really look up to for his skills of social media and just slip, slip casting and glazing. There's a lot of people we could have on in the clay world. Uh, and then business owners too. Like we talked to, I know a lot of the business owners in town around here that would be interesting to talk to about how they started their business, how they run their business. Yeah. So yeah, so each fun. episode might have just different topics to it because we are encompassing three kind of unique topics, I guess, and then just learning from either business people, clay people, coffee people, all of the above. And what I really wanted to do, which this may or may not work because you probably can hear that we're <laughs> trying to work also like do the podcast. We're trying to think of tasks that we can do that wouldn't be super loud or that we could still think about things. Um, Cause for whatever reason, that just feels appealing to me that we can yeah. like work on something. So you can see like what it's like in the pottery studio every day, right? <clears throat> so like that was like 25 balls of clay that I just got ready out of the 200 that we need to get. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kai obviously realized that it's very loud yeah. to pack the pot, so we're yeah. gonna abandon that idea. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, what else are we going to talk well, about? Well, we could start talking about the what you're getting clay balls ready for. Yeah, yeah. The giant. So the logo match. mugs, 200 yeah. mugs. Yeah. Yep, so basically like all these mugs up here are different logo mugs that we've done before for people, which yeah, these are this is an interesting topic to talk about, but basically it has someone's logo on it. And there's a couple companies that do it really, really well, right? Like Deneen and Gray Fox. I talk to them and they do like 600 mugs a day. And so this would be like a third of a day for them. Right. I mean, it's not a third of a day because they have to throw it and then they have to handle it and logo it and glaze it. So it takes as long, but you know, they'll to throw 200. Well, for us, it'll be a two, two or three week probably. project. Yeah. yeah. Like we'll, so we'll start throwing this week and then Kai and handles logos and then we'll let them dry, bisque them, glaze them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we don't, I mean, we did like 300 some Anderson ones, a couple times we've done that one. So those are big orders. Yeah, the, pr the price is always interesting because that's what I, you know, I'm always Wholesale interested in. Wholesale versus. Wholesale versus a whole. Retail. Yeah. yeah, you could do a whole. But, you know, I, I keep our price at one that, you know, keeps us from having thousands, right? right. Like if you want to make a 
thousand logo mugs a month, you probably can if you set your price right. But if you keep your price at, you know, like ours, these are thirty dollars a mug, which mm-hmm. is a lot, but people still do it, you know. Right. Like Southwest Transit didn't even blink an eye, and they're like, "Yep, yeah, let's go for it." I think those wholesale orders are like kind of a necessary evil to me. Just you'll get that money um, to really then you can roll that into what you actually want to do. Like right. gives you the opportunity to actually make what you want to make. Yes. I pay, do. Yeah. Pay the bills and for sure. Yeah. I feel like there's, I mean, that's what a sacrifice. I feel like that all that a lot of artists probably aren't willing to make. And that's mm. probably one of the reasons that they can't keep doing their art, you know, yeah. is because if you are like, I only want to make what I want to make. Right. And if you know, no one buys it, I don't care. Right. You know, that's just not a way that you're going to be sustainable. Yeah. You got to find that, like, you got to find where it coexists, right? You got to find where what you want to make mm-hmm. and what people want to buy coexist. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's like you got to make sacrifices on one a little right. bit. You know, I'm going to spend a yeah. little bit of time making something that maybe I don't want to make or maybe parts of it I like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just so you can pay the bills and then that's what gets you the part where makes you can make whatever you want to make. Right. That's how I see it anyways. For sure. No, I totally yeah. agree. And I, and I've probably fallen into the trap sometimes of too much. Like I only want to make what people want to buy. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And that's just kind of like a recipe for burnout recipe yeah. for like, there, not- yeah, there is a balance between making stuff to sell versus making stuff you want to make as an artist. That's like a really tough for probably a lot of people like balancing that. Like I know this is going to sell, but I'd rather make this. Right. Which, yeah, I mean, that's a, probably an interesting topic for, like, a whole podcast. Right. Which, I don't know, I don't know, can we talk that intensely about a topic for that long? I mean, some things are so cut and dry. Like, that, right. for me, it's like, it's like, yeah, you got to make stuff that you don't want to make sometimes, right? Yeah, but it's like, also, you, like, situational. Like, if you're a part-time, like, if you have a full-time job, like, I work here full-time, like, I'm going to be less likely to take a giant order because I have limited time outside of work to work on stuff, so I'm gonna work on the stuff I wanna make. Right, right. So, I think it's based on how big your business is or how much time you have mm-hmm. with that. For so like, sure. Because no. like, I'm not taking a 200 custom logo mug order right. by myself. I mean, we, yeah, one thing we need to talk about is our studio spaces. So that's probably something a lot of clay people would be interested in, is obviously like this studio, we have three electric kilns, we have a soda kiln, we have a gas kiln, we have a raku kiln. So basically we can do anything. But Kai, you have your own little studio set up at your yeah. apartment. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a little, it's just a garage. I mean, it's a two stall garage. Uh, we put one car in one stall and the other stall is just my studio. I park my car out in outside and it's not heated. There's no kiln. It's pretty bare bones, but I can make pots and then drive here with them in my back seat and hopefully they don't break and put them in the bisque kiln and then yeah they just get fired here so obviously not ideal but gets the job done for now until right. until the next part of my studio journey I guess so. yeah I feel like there's a lot of people that probably are young and you know they don't have a house or they don't yeah. have you know somewhere to go and they're like well how do I make pots you know mm-hmm. and you kind of figure out a way that like you have a setup yeah. You know, to make the pots and then you have a job where, you yeah. know, it's kind of like a give and take where I don't, you can put your stuff in my kilns, right. we're firing them anyway. Yeah. I, like most people, I feel like the kiln is the big issue. They just don't want to set up a studio because they don't have a kiln or whatever. Like I have a kiln, but I just can't wire it. Right. So it's just bringing it here. Whereas I feel like a lot, some people could just wire a kiln pretty, I mean, it's pretty expensive, but you c- you can do it. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, so a few things that are interesting, not to change topics, but about Monk Monkey, I was just going to talk about, like, like this morning we were, well, like, I have to leave in the next, like, 30 minutes to go drive gift cards to Costco. So we're in the local Costco carries Monk Monkey gift cards, which is pretty cool. So I have to go drop off, like, 150 units. Um, there's just a bunch of stuff I'm really excited about Monk Monkey about. We're doing a new website, so hopefully like we'll have coffee beans for sale on there very soon. Uh, you can buy it. We have like eight different blends that we're doing. Uh, we're getting a new roaster, like a bigger roaster that we're putting at one of our other stores, mm. which is really interesting and fun. 
And yeah, there's just always interesting stuff going on. Yeah. When you think about the different ways that you can combine pottery and coffee beans and all the stuff. Yeah. All the things. We did just have a big restock. So we'll say this podcast is sponsored by John the Potter on Etsy. So if you want to go check out any pots we have and we'll try and keep them stocked. Like how, you know, we do one restock a month is kind of like our online um, system, procedure, whatever. And then, you know, this, this mug project will keep us busy for a while. So then I'm guessing once this one is kind of done, then we'll like feel like, okay, now we can kind of restock mm -hmm. the stores like Monk Monkey. So each store has pots for sale there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, you know, we only have, what do we have? What's November? What is it today? November something? Fourth, third? Day something. before election day. That's right. Uh, yeah. So you can use this podcast that is, as a distraction. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I think if, if anybody is watching, like maybe leaving suggestions or comments of things you'd like to hear or see or people uh, that come on as guests, like mm -hmm. if you suggest different potters, different business owners, some maybe roasters or people that are really highly into coffee, like, or just different aspects of, of business are probably like the big things, like how a business works, how different people's businesses work. Right. Yeah, I feel like that would be super in interesting for people is more specifics yeah. about things. Right. You know, like, right. you know, like we sell... So far, I just looked on Etsy, we've sold like $37,000 of pottery on Etsy, right? That's probably interesting to somebody. Right, for, probably, this, for this year. For this year yes. so far, yeah. 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 So yeah, like our, my business is basically like, it's basically like a third on Etsy online, a third in-store at Mocha Monkey, and then a third at like special events. Like we do this pottery event in August, mm -hmm. we do Art Wander. So, you know, if at the end of the year we sell hundred and Forty thousand word dollars worth of pottery, probably. Then a third, third, third. It's like mm -hmm. forty-five grand, forty-five grand, forty-five grand, something like that. Yeah. So you know, someday, you know, if we can keep growing and hopefully get that to a bigger number, I mean, and then the expenses are basically like most of the material is pretty cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Like either the glazes come from Mako, we have a good partnership with Mako, and the clay comes from Continental Clay. Shout out to them. And. Um, even then, even if you buy stuff, it's pretty cheap, yeah. you know, per yeah. pot. Right. But then the main expense right now is labor, is Kai, and then other, like, materials like gas, propane, mm -hmm. whatever. So it's a good business to be in, but it's just hard to sell that many pots, yeah. you know? Yeah, the margins are definitely there. The margins just... are there to do something. I mean, that's why, that's why you can buy a mug at Walmart for $5. Yeah. Because when you can get your labor so cheap, mm -hmm. like it is in other countries, yeah. then you can mass produce it. Yeah. You see that, you know that Robert Lugo, Luogo? Yeah, yeah. He has like a partnership with Walmart. Do you see that? No way. Yeah. He has pots in Walmart? Well, I, I would assume they're production made. So like he designed them and then yeah. someone else produced yeah. them? Yeah, yes. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, that's what you get when you have really, really cheap materials. Mm -hmm. And you can get cheap, but obviously labor in the U.S. is not cheap. So it's hard to... Right. That's why like, um, what's that company in North Carolina or somewhere on the East Coast. Big pottery company. Matisse is the owner of it. Like Matisse. Man, Matisse. The famous artist Matisse, it's like his grandson. Okay. It's huge. What is that? What is it called? It's a pottery company? It's a pottery company, but they're massive. I mean they're mm, huge. But they're they sell mugs, you know, for like thirty dollars. Oh. oh. Plates, bowls, a lot of a lot of machinery that's yeah, making them but then right, finished by right. you know hand hand what is that what are they called they're like the main they're probably the main pottery company I th that I isn't th like think a I'm, custom yeah I think I know who you're talking about I just don't know their name which doesn't help at all God. well we'll put it in the description <laughs> yeah. or we'll put it on the bottom of the thing um alright I think that's probably good for this first one yeah let's call it and let's call it good we'll edit it see how it looks maybe it'll never see the light of right. day or maybe it will and yeah. we'll go from there just keep keep growing keep doing it alright see you guys in the next podcast <laughs>